Could we see the return of Team Canada in Impact Wrestling? Don Callis speaks on Rohit Raju, an interview with Safe Travis Moore, one half of the Smos. Drew Gulak has been released from the WWE and a really dumb What Culture article. All this and more coming up next on Shooting Up North with Lewis Carlin right here on the Impact Lounge. Hey folks, thanks for joining me today. Lewis Carlin here. Impact Wrestling has released a new Team Canada t-shirt, which has led to speculation that we might be seeing a new version of Team Canada in Impact Wrestling. And I, there's been, on social media, people have been talking about it. Um, there have been other uh, websites writing articles about it. Are we going to see a new Team Canada? So I was thinking about it, and I'm thinking it might not be that bad of an idea for Impact Wrestling to release Team Canada. Since they're going with the TNA uh, title on, on Moose and they have the TNA storyline, maybe it wouldn't be a bad idea to bring back Team Canada. I don't know who who would who would make up the new version of Team Canada. So I was thinking I have a couple of ideas, uh, but let's go back. The original version of Team Canada uh, was a 2004 X Cup. It was at Teddy Hart, Jack Evans, Johnny Devine, and Petey Williams. Jack Evans not really a Canadian, but is professional wrestling anybody could be a Canadian. Uh, so that was that was the first version of of Team Canada, and then it, it progressed from there. We had other members: Eric Young, Bobby Roode, uh, Scott Demore was the coach. Uh, we had A1, and there were other members of Team Canada: uh, Tyson Dukes uh, as well. So uh, there have been a, a, a quite a few members of um, of Team Canada that have gone on to be uh, bigger stars in the world of professional wrestling. And so. I'm thinking, what would the new version of, of Team Canada be like? Well, first of all, um, Teddy Teddy Hart, the original version. Forget about Teddy Hart. We're not gonna not gonna bring Teddy Hart in at all. He's the thinking. A lot of people are thinking, oh, maybe Teddy Hart could come in and he could be uh, the new team captain. But no, I don't think anyone's gonna sign Teddy Hart um, anytime soon. So, so who would be the how would how would they work it? Who would, I I have a couple ideas. I have a couple ideas. So. I don't think Scott Demore will be coming back as a coach. First of all, I don't think Scott Demore would want to come back. He's he's the executive vice president, Impact Wrestling. He's played his full. I don't think he wants to come back uh, and um, be an on-air personality. I could be wrong, but I, I don't think that's what he would want to do right now. Uh, and I was reading also other people um, share that same feeling uh, that I do. So I, I don't know if he want to come back. So who would be who would be the leader? Would be the initial leader, or the the new I shouldn't say initial, the new leader of of Team Canada if it's introduced. My choice, my choice would be Johnny Bravo. That would be my choice because Johnny Bravo right now is playing a bit of a goofball character. He's not really a goofball. If you watched Cut Check, you could see he could get really serious. He get really intense. So I think he would be a great leader for the new Team Canada. And yes. He's not Canadian. He was born in the United States. He was born in Michigan, I believe. But he spends a lot of time up here in Canada. He trains at the Border City Wrestling School. So he trains up here in Windsor, Ontario. It's, 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 Windsor is right on the border of Michigan. So it's easy for him to go back and forth. So, again, it's professional wrestling. He could say, yes, I was born in, uh, in the United States, but, but Canada is in my heart. Uh, so I pledge allegiance to Canada. And he would be a great leader, I believe. So that, that would be your leader, Johnny, Johnny, uh, Johnny Bravo. So who would be the members? So who would be the members? So I think you want to bring in a few older wrestlers, uh, mix in with some newer wrestlers. So, so you want to go back. Petey Williams, Tyson Dukes, both part of, of Team Canada from the past, uh, back 2006, 2004, 2006. They were both members. Uh, Tyson Dukes, 2006 only, actually. Uh, but I would bring them in. Bring them in. Bring in Petey Williams. Bring in Tyson Dukes. Those could be your first two members of Team Canada. And then where do you go from there? Where do you go from there? This is where you bring in the, the new faces. So I would go definitely Aiden Prince. Aiden Prince I would bring in. I would go to the Maritimes and I would try to get Marcus Burke, 
think Marcus Burke would be a tremendous addition to Team Canada. Uh, he's just an absolute megastar in the Maritimes wrestling scene right now. So Marcus Burke, Kobe Durst, another extremely, extremely talented wrestler who I think is destined for, for big things. And I would also bring in Tyler Turver. I think Tyler Turver, the, the runner-up of Gut Check, would, would make a great member of Team Canada. So that would be the – that's my first – idea for a team so johnny bravo the leader pd williams tyson dukes uh i shouldn't say leader johnny bravo as the coach johnny bravo as the coach pd williams tyson dukes aiden prince marcus burke kobe durst tyler turver so that would be that would be one version i think that would be a terrific version of team canada you know they'd be in the states they'd be booed of course when they're in canada they would be cheered uh so i think that would be uh that would be terrific version of a new team canada also also, let, I have another version as well. Another version as well. When you think about it, you have the North. The North are the Impact Wrestling Tag Team Champions uh, up here uh, from Canada, of course. Uh, that's why they're called the North. But, <laughs> but but they could be the first two members. You know, bring them in. They could be the first two members of of a Team Canada. And then again, I would bring in Aiden Prince, uh, Kobe Durst. Uh, of course, Tyler Tover, but I would actually switch it up maybe. Uh, there's another talented wrestler up here. His name is Justin Sane. I, w- I would bring Justin Sane in as well. And uh, so, yeah, so you'd have the North, Josh Alexander, Ethan Page, uh, Aiden Prince, Kobe Durst, Tyler Tover, and Justin Sane would make a terrific version of, of Team Canada. And, of course, Johnny Bravo would be their coach as well. A, lot of, a couple of people are saying that uh, maybe Michael Elgin, maybe Michael Elgin could be the enforcer uh, if you need an enforcer for for Team Canada. I, I don't, I don't think Michael Elgin would. Um I don't think Michael Michael Elgin would want to be his character wouldn't want to wouldn't want to be a part of a faction. Uh, his character would be is a more of a standalone character. So I, I don't I, I wouldn't want to see a Michael Elgin in in Team Canada. I don't think uh, I don't think that would fit his character. And and people are saying oh Eric Young's coming back. Maybe Eric Young could be part of of Team Canada. I I, I rather I rather him stay away from Team Canada. I'd rather Eric Young. I'd rather Eric Young come in um, as as the quote unquote sanity character, and then feud with Sammy Callahan and form his own faction, uh, either with OVE or with uh, with a group of other guys that he brings in. So I I would want to keep Eric Young away from Team Canada. So I, I think the two versions I have are pretty good. If any anybody listening right now, you have any other versions of Team Canada, uh, just feel free to put them in the comments and uh, we'll check them out. Cool. All right, let's move on. Don Callis on the new uh, Aftershock show, which is a impact, the Impact Wrestling post show, the new Impact Wrestling post show. Uh, he he made a few comments about about Rohit Raju. I don't I don't know. I, I, I was a little questionable though. Um, well, he said this is a, Don Callis. Don Callis speaking. He says, I mean, we can speak candidly about this show, right? I mean, look, Rohit Raju has had a really rough ride so far in Impact Wrestling. We've seen that. And I think sometimes guys like Rohit let their anger and their emotions get the better of them. And I think Rohit has bitten off more than he can chew. But for once, he's finally in charge of his own destiny. And I think that's a new thing for him. Don Callis, come on. That's not a new thing for him. Okay, it's not a new thing for him. Everybody, everybody that's a Rohit Raju fan, I shouldn't say everybody, but I say about 95% of the Rohit Raju fans know that he's Hakeem Zayn on the indie scene, and he's in charge of his own destiny, and it's not a new thing for him. And he does an, a hell of an incredible job on the indie scene. He is he is just I, I personally think he's much better as Hakeem Zayn than Rohit Raju uh, when he's on the indie scene he's he's given um the ability to go all out and he's proven time and time again that he can deliver uh, so he's not for once finally in charge of his own destiny and it's definitely not a new thing for him Don Callis so uh this, that was a comment that, that I totally disagree with on, on Rohit Raju. And uh, he says he's had a rough ride so far in Impact Wrestling. And, uh, okay, he's had a rough ride so far in Impact Wrestling. Uh, you're the executive vice president. What are you going to do about it? 
<laughs> what are you going to do about it, Don Cal? So are you going to give him the push he deserves, or are you going to leave him in, uh, in the Desi Hit Squad? Uh, well, actually, I think he's I, th- I think he's out of the Desi Hit Squad. He's calling himself the Desi Hit Man now. So I think he's kind of stepped away uh, from. Actually, you know, Don Cal says speak about that. He goes, look, he's a talented kid. He's always had good matches, but what the but what the difference between someone who has good matches and someone who's actually over and someone who's actually on the cusp of a title. But what that difference between some? Uh, let me read that again. I'm sorry, I'm reading too fast. It says, uh, it says, look, he's a talented kid. This is from Don Callis. Look, he's a talented kid. He's a guy that always has good matches. Matches. But what that difference between someone who has good matches and someone who's actually over, someone who's actually on the cusp of a title? I don't think he's there yet. He seems like a guy who is in need of an advisor. I don't know who that is. It clearly wasn't Gama Singh. Come on, man. He's in he is in need of an advisor. Is Don Callis watching indie wrestling? Is he watching is he watching Glory Pro? Is he watching is he watching AAW? Is he watching Hakeem Zane in those promotions? He's he's not in need of advice. And yeah, I know. Okay, this is professional wrestling and he's he's uh, this he's he's uh, okay. But anyway, he, it it <sighs> I, I just think they should just get together and say, look, we're going to drop Rohit Raju, and you're now Hakeem Zayn. Bring in uh, the guy that he's with, Karam, uh, on the indie scene, because they're actually killing it right now. And I've said this on a couple of other shows. Bring them in, and, and you'll get you'll get a star. You'll get a star. And there's no, no way that Rohit Raju should have lost uh, to Trey Miguel. I mean, this is in charge of his own destiny. We want to give him a push. Now you got to give him a push, but but he's lost. Unless it's leading to another storyline, I, I don't know. But um, and then he called him out on his catchphrase. You know, the phrase says, "My my mother called me son because I shine like one." And Don Callis said that that catchphrase has got to go. Why? You're the ex- well, first of all, you're the ex- you're the executive vice president of Impact Wrestling. And you're 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 putting down one of your talents, saying that his catchphrase has got to go. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't. It, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. As the executive vice president, you shouldn't be putting down your talent. You should be, you know, bringing up your talent. You should be uh, being have positive feelings towards your talent. But he says that that catchphrase has got to go. He says, and he says, he says, uh, Duncan Allen said, my my mother. Uh, so my mother called me dumbass, but I wouldn't go bragging about it on this show. So there you go. It has that's nothing to do with it. Eh? My mother called me dumbass. It has nothing to do with my mother called me son because I shine like one. You know, he's been using that catchphrase for years, for years, and suddenly Don Callis says it's gotta go. No, it doesn't gotta. It's a great catchphrase, and I hope it doesn't go. I hope it stays. I hope it stays with Rahit Raju slash Hakeem Zayn forever. It's a great, great catchphrase. All right. Anyway, let's move on. So Drew, Gal- Drew Gulak has been released from the WWE, and this is interesting. Drew Gulak, a uh, very talented wrestler, and um, released from the WWE. And uh, that's, uh, a lot of uh, a lot of people on social media are saying, oh, I'd like to see him in Impact Wrestling. And I kind of agree. I wouldn't mind seeing Drew Gulak in Impact Wrestling. There's a lot of guys out there right now that's available that uh, I'm sure Impact Wrestling is looking at. Um, I know they've had a flurry of signings recently, and I don't think it's over yet. I think we're going to still have many many more signings coming for uh, Impact Wrestling. Uh, but Drew Gulak is interesting. Uh, someone pointed out that Drew Gulak versus Michael Elgin would be an incredible match. And again, I'm going to agree with that. That would be fantastic. So I, I, wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't be against signing Drew Gulak. Uh, I... I, you know, I, I see there's a lot of guys that they can sign. Like I mentioned, Joe Hennig, uh, who was Curtis Axel. Uh, there's a lot of guys out there that 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 they could bring in uh, that I feel that is is obtainable for Impact Wrestling. Because every every time someone gets released now, it's like, oh, they're going to AEW. AEW has the money. No, not everybody that's released is going to AEW. AEW is not just going to sign every single release WWE wrestler. Uh, first of all, they're not going to want to do that. Uh, and second of all, it's it's there's, there's no just because they have money doesn't mean that everyone wants to go to AEW. No, I'm sorry, Impact Wrestling has a great history and they're they're on a um, huge upswing right now. So uh, calling Impact Wrestling home is 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 a lot more desirable to professional wrestlers than it was a few years ago. Uh, so 
I'm I'm I I'm expecting Impact Wrestling, like I said, to to continue this signing flurry, and we're going to see a lot more signings coming up. And uh, Drew Gulag, Drew Gulag would be a a uh, excellent addition for Impact Wrestling. So let's let's uh, let's see how it goes. Let's see how it goes. Tommy Dreamer. Tommy Dreamer uh, has stated that uh, there's another group of uh, tapings, uh, which will be about six, seven weeks of tapings that are going to be done in the beginning of June. Uh, so that's great news. So they're they're continuing the tapings during this uh, crazy pandemic, and uh, hopefully this pandemic is going to end soon, and uh, we can get back to live wrestling. But um, I I'm very happy that uh, Impact Wrestling has decided not to close up shop until this pandemic ends, and they're going to continue uh, with uh, these tapings and. I'm sure during these next set of tapings, we're going to see a, a number of new faces. And I'm going to predict right now we're going to see Eric Young back uh, for sure. Uh, we're going to see Eric Young back. I, I hope we see EC3 back uh, in Impact Wrestling uh, in June. And um, the only one I could really, really confidently predict will be coming to Impact Wrestling in these new, in, in this new set of tapings is Eric Young. So, but I'm hoping we see uh, a lot more uh, new faces on these uh, new sets of tapings that are coming up. All right, let's talk about what culture. Let's talk about what culture. What culture has put out two articles. Well, one article that kind of got me a little upset. And... uh, The title of the article, I'm sorry, I'm just thinking about it. The title of the article is 10 WWE stars who managed to shake off the quote-unquote TNA stink. Now, let me, let, let me read you the, the start of this, uh, this article. The TNA stink. Yeah, it says, in wrestling circles, there have often been talk of the TNA stink that follows so many of these um, performers to WWE. A stink that saw them forever tied to awful TNA angles and moments of simply being associated with a wrestling promotion that Vince McMahon saw as an insignificant Bush League company. First and foremost, what do you mean by TNA stink? What what does that even mean, TNA stink? Uh, you, You mentioned that there have been some bad TNA angles or moments. There have been... A lot more bad WWE angles and moments, you know that that you clearly don't mention here. So so what's this TNA stink you're talking about? What, so, so wrestlers that that get signed by the WWE, they have this aura of TNA stink on them that they that they need to get rid of. And let, let's well, first of all, that's preposterous. Second of all, let's let's go over some of the names that they mentioned here that had a shake off. Uh, this TNA stink. Let, let's let's see some of the names that this the the brilliant. The brilliant uh, non-wrestling fan writer wrote uh, about um, some of the names, or let's let's see some of the names that that this that this guy has chosen, I should say. One name that he put on the list is Sting. One name that this 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 non-wrestling fan writer put on the name was was Sting. Said for Sting, so he's saying for Sting to make it. For Stink to have made it in the WWE, Sting had to shake off that TNA stink. Does does this guy know that Sting is an absolute legend? That he's an absolute icon in um, in professional wrestling. And okay, you know, okay, let me tell you that he does mention that in the article. He does say uh, he does call him an icon. But but why put him? Why why even put Sting on this list? Sting didn't have to shake anything off to make it anywhere. Sting could have gone anywhere he wanted, and but he chose to be in TNA. He chose he turned down the WWE initially years ago and signed with TNA. So what stink are you talking about that Sting had to to shake off? It, it, this stupid, stupid addition, stupid article, a stupid addition to the list. And then he puts he puts Christian. Puts Christian on the list. Christian, who who wouldn't renew his contract with the WWE because he didn't like the direction he was going in, so he signed with TNA, you know, and he did fantastic, he did fantastic with them. Then he went back to to WWE, and what did he do? He really didn't do anything. So what 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 TNA stink did Christian have to shake off? You know, and he's got Samoa Joe, and also what 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 did he have to shake off to make it? It's just a dumb article, really dumb article. 
I mean, can't you just say that you know Samoa Joe and 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 Christian and um, AJ Styles is on the list as well? Can't you just say that they were talented enough to make it in the WWE? They have to they have to go ahead and say, oh, they had to shake off this TNA stink before they can make it. And again, to have Sting on that list is just absolutely just ridiculous just ridiculous and there's another article there's another article that they that they wrote so 12 wrestlers who had their best work in 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 tna and impact and you know who's on that list christian so so christian is on the one list of the 10 wwe stars who managed to shake off the tna stink yet on the on another article it's like oh christian did his best work in tna so if he did his best work in tna what stink did he have to shake off? Granted, they're they're by two different authors uh, wrote the two different authors wrote these articles, uh, but still. So what? If, if but is, is what culture paying attention to anything? I mean, if if you have Christian on one list, twelve wrestlers who do their best work in 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 Impact Wrestling, and you have Christian on there, and then oh wait, ten WWE stars who managed to shake off the TNA stink, and we're going to get Christian on that list, too. just makes no sense. You're just contradicting yourself there. It's just, it, it's just this idiotic. It's foolish. It's foolish. Um, so let, let's actually go to this article. Let's go to the star. The 12 wrestlers who did, the, did their best work in TNA and Impact. And I, I just want to read... I just want to read... Uh, I just want to. I just want to read uh, some of it to you. So it says, um, "Long before it was the ugly duckling of modern American professional wrestling promotions, TNA was a place where underutilized and unappreciated talent thrived." So right off the bat, they're they're pissing me off by by calling Impact Wrestling the ugly duckling of modern American professional wrestling. And then, then they go, after years of largely overlooking anyone with TNA, and, and granted, this article was written on May 15th. I'm recording on May 17th. This article was written on May 15th, 2020. At the years of largely overlooking anyway anyone with TNA on their resume, WWE has softened its stance on workers who ply their trade down in Florida. So this just total moron who's calling impact wrestling the modern the ugly duckling of modern professional wrestling promotions still thinks that impact wrestling is taping their shows at the impact zone in florida that's how out of touch this this guy is uh this person is with 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 today's version of impact wrestling to call it the ugly duckling of modern America, is this guy even watching Impact Wrestling? I I don't think he is. I'm, again, uh, you could go and check the article. Um, I'm not going to say his names. I don't want to get. But if you go on what calls you'll see. But uh, that doesn't. It's, it's okay. He mentions his all-time favorite wrestler is Dean Malenko. He says, but it's but it's really the Repo Man trying to be funny. Uh, but anyway, but uh, I I don't think this guy is watching uh, Impact Wrestling at all. I think uh, what culture just said, hey, uh, you're not doing anything. Why don't you write uh, write something about Impact Impact Wrestling? And uh, he's like, all right, yeah, sure, why not? I'll I'll, I'll do an article and I'll uh, there I'll, I'll write an article on Impact Wrestling. And even though I don't really know anything about it, uh, because uh, he thinks that they still work in the impact zone down in florida uh so it's so, so uh, what culture.com to let these these articles go, uh, get out like this it's stupid oh well, anyone can anyone is entitled to their own opinion um as as i am and my opinion on these two articles are that they both stink that they both stink so both articles in my opinion stink and um that that's what I'm gonna say about it. That's what I'm gonna say about that. Uh, so, so if if you've been, um, uh, hopefully you've been watching Impact Wrestling. Uh, the last two weeks, the North have been taking on very easy opponents. Very easy opponents. Uh, the first week was the Creeps, and then uh, the last episode they took on a team called the Smos. Uh, one of the members of the Smos is actually a buddy of mine. His name is Safe Travis Moore. He was the one wearing the with the the headgear. Uh, Safe Travis Moore is an up-and-coming wrestler here in Ontario, and uh, he's been at it for for a number of years. And uh, he's just working his way up that ladder, and uh, he's just getting better and better and better. And I actually uh, brought him on, and I sat down with him, and we discussed with we we discussed. Um, the experience of uh, being a part of uh, that segment. And um, without further ado, 
here is uh, my uh, little chat with Safe Travis Moore. Hello and welcome to the Shooting Up North interview. I uh, want to welcome my guest today, Safe Travis Moore. Travis, welcome to the show, buddy. Thanks, man. Really appreciate this. Yeah, my pleasure, my my pleasure. So, um, I, I just first of, first and foremost, I want to ask you. I, I know we were talking a little bit um, before I hit record. How, how you dealing with this pandemic, man? I know you're going crazy, man. But um, like, uh, what are you doing? Are you, are you are you like wrestling your your family members, or what? What are you doing right now, man? Uh, I mainly just I'm kind of binging wrestling. I just watch all the guys that like I really like in wrestling. Like I watch Alex Shelley and Chris Saban and stuff. You uh actually you made your you made your debut for on Impact Wrestling uh, last uh, last week um in the the North segment. Uh, so what led to you being chosen to be uh, be in that segment with the North? Honestly, I think it's just because I'm really really small, but I've been working hard for the last bit, right? So, uh, I'm my one of the other smos, right? Uh, Matt Grant, he showed me that uh he basically. Ethan Page said, uh, who's some small guys in Ontario and they're and like reliable. And then he just said, Travis Moore. And I Page texted me literally just as I finished, I think, training or something. And I I was like I was kinda in shock from that. Um but he told me what time to get down there and I told him I'd be I'll be there on time, and I'll make sure to try my best. There you go, man. Now, did, did, so you didn't have to audition. They didn't have a group of guys. You didn't have to audition or anything. It was just you and uh, Matthew Grant, right? And, and the two other guys, uh, the, the creeps. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Charles Blackwolf, and I believe the guy trains with Canam Will. Yeah, I think he's I think he's a referee for for um for Border City the, the guy with the blonde hair. I think he's a referee. I've seen him referee a couple of times for Border City Wrestling if, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I don't I honestly haven't seen Border City Wrestling, so I don't okay. know that. But okay. uh, he's a cool dude. He seems cool. I don't know if Scott Demore is going to like to hear that if if uh <laughs> if you don't watch Border City Wrestling, man. Uh, I'm pretty sure just... it, is it on Impact Plus? No, it's it, it's it, it is on Impact Plus, but nothing recent. I think they have matches from 2005, which is a little surprising because I, I figured um they would uh they would have uh, up the updated matches uh, for Border City Wrestling on Impact Plus, uh, but um but anyway, so so you must have been like you must have been absolutely thrilled. I mean, uh, with with this pandemic going on to to get a to get a text message from from Ethan Page to to participate, man. Yeah, I was kind of, like I said, I was kind of, like, in shock, and I was, like, I was in the car with my mom, and I just kind of sat there, and then she was talking to me, and I wasn't responding, because I was, like, just kind of, like, processing it, and then I was, like, I think I'm going to be on impact, and then she said, <laughs> I was, like, and my mom was already kind of, like, iffy about the pandemic, where she was just kind of, like, she didn't want to go anywhere, and she's, like, I'll drive you there, don't worry. Yeah, no, absolutely, man. You, you take, that, take that. So, I, well, you guys, you guess you weren't worried at all, because I know, the, I know, uh, yeah, they had the North there, uh, the the creeps. Uh, there's a couple of people there, so you weren't, were you a little worried at all that oh, this is a pandemic going on, and I uh, want to make sure that um, this, we we do enough social distancing, which is kind of hard in professional wrestling. So, were you, were you, was that in the back of your mind at all? I uh, yeah, I was kind of like distancing myself from everyone, but like. I was close enough to some people who were like, for example, I would stand, I would be near Matt Grant, right? Because we would be trying to figure something out, not for the match, but, you know, like we'll be talking about something. And then we'd be talking to Paige and Josh, well, like right before we're going out to wrestle them or get our asses beaten by them, if I can say that. <laughs> Okay. Uh, did, did you know what you were gonna be doing before you arrived, or did you know it was, it was gonna be a, a squash match, or did you think, oh, maybe this is gonna, be, maybe um, I'll get some offense in? Or did, did you know what they were gonna be doing beforehand, or you just learned everything when you got there? I like, I had a feeling, right? Because I was just like, I was like, man, I'm pretty small. I'm probably gonna die from someone, and then 
because <laughs> you don't really see like the small guys on TV doing much that like whenever they like randomly chosen kind of thing, right? But yeah, uh, as soon as we got there, as soon as they told me, I was like, "This is even better than what I expected." <laughs> okay, so so take me through the day of the filming, um, and and how long did it take to film your segment? I know the creeps were on first, and then and followed by uh by uh, you and Matthew Grant, uh, who by the way I just want to shout out to Matthew Grant. Anyone not familiar with Matthew Grant? Um, he's a member of the tag team, uh, the Empire, uh, big tag team in cross body professional wrestling. So so be sure to check them out. Um, but so so what was the the day like uh, during the filming? Um, um. And again, again I'll, I'll repeat the question. How long did it take to, to film your segment? So our segment, I think it took us like 30 minutes probably just because I you know it was probably like an hour because what they did was uh, they filmed the one and they filmed uh, like George going nuts. Right. Like because that was like a big thing about it. Right. George was going to like over exaggerate everything. Yeah, and then they refilmed it because he said something, and then like they would refilm different parts just because they just were like, ah, this could be better. It was kind of like sitting in a uh, Steven Spielberg film, just retaking, t- like retaking takes over and over again. As you know, that's more uh, Kubrick. Okay, um, but yeah, it was literally like it had to been like an hour of just us refilming stuff um so so i, I just want to say uh josh alexander absolutely destroyed you and uh he didn't even have to retake any of those um those sick bombs did you it was just it was that just a one-time thing um i had to take a i had to retake one and it oh, was the, gosh it was the toss off the top rope into the backbreaker <laughs> because uh they wanted a different camera angle, right? Because they didn't show enough of the ref taking the money from Paige. Because the original take was just kind of like, it showed it, but wasn't really focusing on it. And then this went back to me and, me and Josh. And then, yeah, I had to retake that. But the second time they tossed me off, I landed on Josh's shoulder. And instead of doing the backbreaker, I just slipped off and landed on my back on the mat. So so, how are you feeling after that one? After that, after that man, you must have been. You, were well, you thinking, what did I get myself into <laughs> into here, man? Because uh, the the power, you took a power bomb to Josh uh, Alexander's knee, didn't you? That was uh, Matt. Matt took the power no, bomb. No, but I but he did but he did put you he did put you on his knee though, didn't he? Oh yeah, he did put me on his knee for the yeah. backbreaker. But yeah, yeah, um, okay, sorry, backbreaker, okay. Yeah. Um. I feel all right now. I'm still kind of. I'm still. <laughs> this kind was of, like, what was this like? You say, you're saying you feel all right now. This is May seventeenth. What day did they film this? <laughs> man, I was half out. Yeah, remember. you. Were, I'm saying. I mean, if this was filmed like two weeks ago, and you're saying you you feel okay now, so you, you're just getting over the 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 the, the, the excuse me for saying, but the annihilation from Josh Alexander. You're just getting it over and over it now, huh? Yeah, I, <laughs> I'm, I think, like, I also kind of, like, I'll, like, train a little bit where, like, I'll just kind of go the, to my, like, school's wrestling ring by myself and just, like, yeah. kind of feel it out. And then, gotcha. so I might be a little sore from that, too, because I was kind okay. of going, kind of going hard right. after. Did, 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 did Josh Alexander buy you dinner or lunch or anything like that, at least? Oh no! <laughs> no. Okay. I actually asked him. I I actually sent him a message after I said I said I I sent him a message on Facebook. Said Josh, why why were you so hard on Travis Moore, man? You should should have took it easy on him. And he just said that's not my style. So so um, <laughs> <laughs> I kind of felt bad. I was like, you should took it easy on on poor on poor Travis. Um, but uh, but the the headgear who, who you, you came out with the headgear and I gotta admit I bro- broke out laughing with the the headgear. <laughs> well, why were you wearing that he- that head? Whose idea was to put that headgear on you? Uh, so basically what happened was I had more gear on too. So, um, 
Scott DeMora came up because he was there too, just to make sure everything was fine. And he's like, hey, kid, take this. And he gave me, first he gave me like uh, the headgear. And then I was like, sick. I think that's funny. I put it on. And then he goes, put this on. It's like this big kind of belt that like has a thick padding for like, I'm guessing jujitsu or something because it's at Battle Arts. And then they gave me kick pads, and they gave me this big shield, right? And they're like, yeah, come out with that. And then as soon as I got into the ring with it, I couldn't get into the ring because the big weight belt. So I just started taking it off. And Scott's okay. like, what are you doing? And so uh, the headgear was, like, the most notable thing. But if you look, yeah. there's, like, some belt lines on my shoulders because I was carrying around that big belt. And you could see the, the shield for a second. But I had to drop all of that stuff because I couldn't get in the ring properly. Couldn't get in the ring. I also, I also, also laughed when <laughs> Matthew Grant. Uh, he he gave you that little chest slap, and you're like, oh, and you like you got hurt from, yeah. from the from the little chest the chest slap. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was, that was that was a great. Was that improvised or were you told to do that? Uh, that was improvised. That was great, man. That was that was a, <laughs> a great scene, man. Uh, but dude, I was gonna ask you if Scott Demore was there. So, Scott Demore there. Did you, did you think uh, maybe? Hey, I'll Scott Demore's here. Let me uh, let me uh, ask him uh, when I could get my shot at Impact Wrestling. Oh, <laughs> did, uh, did that cross your mind, or or did you say no? Nah, this is not the place for that. I I just said this is not the place for that. I. I had briefly talked to him. I was just thanking him for the opportunity and everything. And I just asked him, what do you want me to do? I'll try and do it as perfectly as you want kind of thing. And, um, yeah, he was there. I more talked to Iceman to talk about Destiny 2. But, uh, yeah. I, I talked to Demore quickly, and he was, he was really nice. He was a good. He's a good man. Just tell. Yeah. No, he's a great. He's done a fantastic job with Impact Wrestling, uh, but yeah, uh, let's say George. George was so amped up, man. How much? It, it's like he had like the first, the second, the second segment. He wasn't as bad as the first. First segment, it was like he was on like ten thousand cups of coffee, man. Uh, so that must have been fun watching him do that live. Um, I will admit, I was laughing pretty hard during the whole thing. <laughs> like. Even the first one, when he was announcing, I thought it was kind of funny. But um, George was like, he was so amped up during that. And as soon as it ended, he would just sit down and just be really calm. And like, it's weird. He has like a switch in his mind, obviously, which I have yeah, no, no respect he's... for that. Yeah, no, he could he could switch it on he could switch it on and off like uh, at the drop of a drop of a hat, man. Um, I mean, I, I had him on I had him on um, uh, my other show, um, Alliance Pro Wrestling Network, and and he's like he's so amped up, but as soon as we started recording, he was like really mellow and calm. I was like, wow, it's, I guess he gets into character, man, and um, it's it's great that he could do that. Uh, so so you spoke about destiny. I mean, I think uh, uh, you I think you. Would have uh, you definitely deserve a shot at Destiny. So, um, and any uh, any positive feedback from George on that? Or uh, I more talked to him about Destiny, like getting on their ring crew, because I really want to like just kind of okay show respect to him, kind of thing. And oh, absolutely. He said, "Yeah, just text me or something, and uh, we'll get a list of guys to join for the ring crew for Destiny's next show when everything comes back." And I said, "Well, if I'm not booked, you know, I'll be here." Absolutely, yeah. that's uh, Destiny. Be a great place, a uh, great place for you, man. Uh, so, big question. Uh, I'm sure everybody is wondering, when are we gonna get the creeps versus the smos? <laughs> that would be Ooh. a five star classic, man. Um, <laughs> probably. Actually, I tweeted it out on Twitter, and I, I posed a question to Scott Demore, and he hasn't answered yet. But um, but maybe you have some inside information on on, on the Creeps versus the Smoes feud. Uh, I I would say um, don't expect something big. <laughs> <laughs> just never, it'll never happen, man. So yeah. were there were there any more segments, or was it just the two segments that that they filmed? Um. I don't think I'm 
Okay, no, that's no, uh, fair enough, fair enough. I'm sorry. Uh, I will I'll drop the question. I'll go to the next one. Um, so uh, bef before we wrap this up, um, I know we, we've been speaking about Impact Wrestling. Um, let's talk about your career, you know, because you, you have a, a, um, a budding career here in, in in Ontario, wrestling for a number of promotions. So um, anyone that's listening right now who might not be familiar uh, with um, Safe Travis Moore, just want you say some of the promotions that you work for and where people might be able to find your work on social media. I have worked on many ones could be like NSW, PWO. Uh, I wrestled for CWO for their title before. Um, I've done Alpha 1 before. I know I've done a lot more than that. I, that's just the ones that are coming to the top of my mind. Um, sure. And uh, to find me on social media, just look up the underscore Travis Moore on uh, Instagram and Twitter. And then just for, like, Facebook page, just write down uh, Travis Moore or uh, at S Travis Moore. And, yeah. Okay. And uh, you have matches up on YouTube. Uh, if anybody wants to check out your matches, you have matches up on YouTube as well. Yeah, I got a, I have a bunch from CWO, and then I have a highlight video that I just uploaded a few weeks ago, I believe. Oh, I know, yeah, I know you had, um, uh, shoot, um, there's there's quite a few up there, uh, but anyway, just just uh, check them out. Type in Safe Travis Moore on on YouTube and uh, check out. There's there's plenty of matches on there, and uh, and I'm I'm certain that one day you're gonna get that. Um, that uh, that call from Impact Wrestling when they're up here in Windsor or in Toronto, and uh, you'll be uh, you'll be on the show, and um, hopefully uh, that'll that'll be soon, man. Thanks, brother. Appreciate that. My my pleasure, man. My pleasure. And and don't worry, man. This pandemic's gonna end. I know you're going crazy, and uh, you'll be back in the ring um, very very soon, man. Thank you. My Thanks. pleasure, man. Yeah, me too, man. I, I kind of miss you guys, man. Uh, and I still have to see my first um, uh, Travis Moore match live. I know, uh, I know. We talk, we talk a lot on social media, but I still have to see my first match live. And are you? Question. Uh, let me bring this up. Um, uh, anyone not familiar with the Temple? The Temple is a they're a, they're a big faction up here in Ontario. Is that done? Are you still part of the uh, the Temple, or is that or is that on? Uh, is that just did that end when PWA uh, folded or changed I mean, their name to three to three sixty five? I was on the last Kitchener show with okay. uh, Lenny and uh, Jeff's match against uh, Scumbag Royalty. I was just kind of, I'm like the, I think I'm the only one that stuck around, kind of thing. Okay. And they're like, "Hey, take this. You're coming with us for this part, and we're going to give you some spots to do for us, kind of thing." Okay. Okay, cool. So hopefully, uh, well, I'll, what I'll do is when I'm done, I'll, I'll, I'll give Tex Lexus a call. Who's Tex Lexus, uh, the the leader of um, of the temple, and I'll, I'll, I'll make sure that uh, unless you don't want me to, but I'll, I'll make sure that he makes you a full fledged member. I, I, I'm actually uh, this, uh, almost a full fledged member of the temple, uh, so I, I, I get, uh, and that came straight from Tex Lexus's mouth. Uh, but I, I could talk to him, and if, if. Um, and uh, suggest that you would you should be back in the temple. I I think uh, he doesn't even know my name. He calls me Trevor in textbook and stuff like that. <laughs> okay. So, well, he he calls me New York Louis, so he doesn't. That, that that's Louis, his name like, from. I'm New York from from Queens, New York. So he calls me New York Louis. Uh, but anyway, man, I want to thank you for joining me today. It's, it's been an ab absolute pleasure, and. Um, and uh, any any time, man, um, you want to get together, uh, you're always you're always welcome on this show or uh, the Alliance Pro Wrestling Network show, man. Thanks, brother. Appreciate that. My pleasure, man. Well, this has been uh, the Shooting Up North interview. I'm your host, Lewis Carlin. Thank you very much for joining me today. And until next time, thank you very much. Take care. Bye bye. Stay safe, everyone. So long. Bye bye. <laughs>